for what God's about to do, it had to take a little bit longer down. But as soon as it breaks forth, I feel, I feel my mama's anointing right here. When Brenda Todd says break forth, break forth, there's something that happened. That, that, like, there, there's something that's about to happen. It's go, you're going to be looking at it. And as you're looking at it, then it's just going to break forth. And something is going to move and it ain't going to stop. The bamboo plant is one of the fastest growing plants in the world. It's sturdy. It's solid, it's strong, it's durable, it's used for building. It is incredibly strong and regenerates itself in nature. So then I was like, okay, God's about to make it a bamboo season, about to be strong, sturdy. I was like, let me do a push up. Like, I didn't know. And then I kept reading, and it said, it takes the bamboo about three years after being sown to break through. Now, last week we talked about having faith like a farmer and we talked about sowing seeds. And I, I gave you a formula, but then when I started to look at this, I started to see that there are different ways that different plants grow. And this plant grows under the surface for three years. But then, when it breaks through, ooh-wee, scientifically, under the right conditions, the bamboo can grow an astonishing two inches an hour. Three years under, two inches an hour. That means that suddenly, where it looked like there was nothing, somebody shout at me, suddenly. Woo! Where it looks like there was no movement, no growth, nobody cared, nobody was listening, nobody had traction, somebody shout at me, suddenly. It grows two inches an hour. That means the bamboo can go from nothing to growing four feet in 24 hours. God began to show me, he said, Michael, I need you to tell my church that this is the season of unusual acceleration. I need somebody to hear me. Put up a picture of a bamboo forest. This is a picture of what some of your life is about to look like. Now, everybody don't have to shout because some of y'all don't have faith for this, but the name of this series is Crazier Faith. And right now, what looks completely empty, right now, what looks like a vacant desert, right now, what nobody has been able to check for, check back with me tomorrow, because what God can do, somebody say it's bamboo season. And I came to prophetically tell you that it is bamboo season, and it is the season of unusual acceleration. Somebody needs to thank God that everything that you've been ashamed of, God will redeem and restore. Because the last sentence of your life will be that God did not let it end in shame. The family that's been ridiculing you for your crazy faith step, the person who said, you better not give that money to them. You coming on this vacation. God said, I promise you, stay with me. I will not let you be put to shame. That's why, Dale, it's the bamboo season. God's saying, you've been faithful all them years and nothing came up. It was still growing. It was just going down. Because of what's about to come up. Uh, little root, little fruit. Little root, little fruit. For what God's about to do, it had to take a little bit longer down. But as soon as it breaks forth, 
I feel? I feel my mama's anointing right here. When Brenda Todd says, break for, break for, there's something that happened. That, that, like, there, there's something that's about to happen. It's go, you're going to be looking at it. And as you're looking at it, then it's just going to break forth. And something is going to move, and it ain't going to stop. This week, a blessing. Next week, a blessing. The week after that, a blessing? The week after that, it's a revolving door. Hold on, I'm lit. This is my life now? Somebody shout at me, it's bamboo season. So, so today, I just got to give you a full few points because some of y'all done you cooked right now all you needed you got it right now you you about to like let's go it's bamboo season your whole room gonna be bamboos this week I, I got you but for those of you that just need a little more how to activate the bamboo season I got a few points for you um I forgot to say the one thing I really like Brie like in that 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 uh that line of system or principles. Can you put the seed so time? Can you put it back up there? See, what ends up happening is that it goes seed, sow, time, work, harvest. And then it's bamboo season, so there's unusual acceleration in seed, sow, time, work, harvest. And you start saying it so fast that what people hear and what it feels like is seed harvest. Seed harvest. Seed harvest. This is the season our church is in. It's like when we plant, it just come up. Seed harvest. We're in such a season of that you, it's so fast you don't even see. And I just needed to tell somebody that only the only reason God does something for this house as the organization is to paint a picture of what he wants to do in your house as the organism. Put your hand on yourself and say, this is my season of unusual acceleration. I'm going to give you three more chances because some of y'all just repeated me. Now you're going to say it by faith. This is my season. Ooh of unusual acceleration. Come on, I want you to look at me. Get in my face right now. And I want you to say, this is my season of unusual acceleration. Now, some of y'all about to see this in your life. I'm saying it one more time. Say it with faith. This is my season of unusual acceleration. Now, give God praise if you really believe it. Some of y'all don't believe it, but somebody's praise does actually believe it. Yep. Luke chapter 5. One day, as the disciples, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Now, let me set the scene for you. Jesus is going around drawing crowds from everywhere. The man can stand anywhere and start preaching, and he is kind of the son of God. And so, like, people just start coming, being healed, blessed, delivered, set free, all the other things. He's preaching at this moment on the Sea of Galilee and could have stayed on the shore, but he saw something that he wanted to use as an example that wasn't the main thing, but was the thing that he wanted us to learn. So he sees two boats, and he was like, I'm about to get in somebody's boat. And he then looks around for the owner. Where are the people whose boat... Oh, they're washing their nets. Hmm. See, what you don't know if you don't fish is washing your nets is the thing you have to do after you go out fishing, no matter if you catch anything or not. What this tells me is that if we want to start seeing and activating a season of unusual acceleration, write this point down, you have to steward well what's not working well. These men were fishing all night that we find out later in the story. They catch nothing. They looked buried. They looked under. 
But God saw them still being faithful in a place that didn't seem fruitful. And it attracted God to them. Mm. In an age where when it doesn't look like it's working, most people quit. God told me to come here and tell you that what is attractive for unusual acceleration is washing your nets. Using well or stewarding well over what doesn't look like it's producing well for you right now. That car that you are ready to throw out. God said you haven't cleaned it in a month. How are you believing for unusual acceleration and you won't steward well? What's not working well? Some of y'all go to marriage counseling for two sessions. And if they don't heal 25 years of your trauma in two sessions, you done. This costs too much. We could go on a vacation and then be mad at each other in the whole vacation. God is saying you're not stewarding well over your marriage. Would you steward well over what's not working well? These disciples decided, even though it didn't work, I'm still going to work it. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but God does not give more to somebody who does not care about what they already have. He is the most amazing steward. Somebody who wants to take care and maximize everything. We see it in the story of the talents. If you go to another place where they tell the parables, God, by his grace, gives somebody one, somebody two, somebody five. And he says, I'm going away. I just need you to do something with what I gave you. And literally, the one with five turns it into ten. The one with two turns it into four. The one with one was scared, and so he buried it. And when he put it in the ground, and he came back, the master said, what'd you do? He said, I doubled it. I doubled it. And this man said, I knew you were a wicked, harsh master, so I didn't want to mess anything up. I didn't want to live in crazy faith. I didn't want to take a step of faith. And so I buried what I had. I kept it hidden. I kept it protected. And here it is back to you. God literally called him a wicked servant because he didn't steward well what seemed to not be working well. I don't know what it is in your life right now, but if you want to see unusual acceleration, God's looking at what's in your hand right now. That apartment that you can't stand, that you're believing God for a house, but I don't want to, can I step on some people? Just let me just, you're not stewarding your finances well. Your nails done, hair done, everything did, but your bills are late. You're messing up the vehicle that God will use on paper to be able to bless you in a different season because you're trying to impress people you don't even like. It's time to steward. Y'all see how quiet it just got right there? It's time to steward. Some of y'all are about to go into so much debt over the holiday season to try to make somebody feel better about you that you won't have a conversation with. The conversation would be Merry Christmas more than all of the gifts that you were going to give them. Say, I'm sorry, and replace the Sony PlayStation. I'm in your business right now. See, what I'm trying to tell you is God says, I've given you something. Steward it well. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.